if you extract teeth in your practice, how would you like to never get another dry socket? That's what I said. Never get another dry socket. Before I took my training in restorative dentistry, I was in an oral surgery fellowship at Baylor College of Dentistry and taught surgery there for two years. When we took out wisdom teeth, the same pattern emerged that a couple of days later, the patient would come in dying with this dry socket about 50% of the time, and we'd pack the socket, they'd get better, and then come back in seven days, you'd remove the packing and they'd be fine. But they went through that dying period. I thought, there's got to be a better way of doing this, because when a person has a dry socket, it's not because the the dentist has done something wrong, it's because they, the patient loses the blood clot prematurely. It takes about seven days for the connective tissue lining to form in the socket once the tooth is extracted. So if you have, especially if you've had to remove any bone and that the bone in the socket is fresh and the nerve endings are exposed, if you lose that blood clot, then you're going to have sensitivity because the nerve endings are exposed. You won't believe this when I tell you this because I hardly believe it myself. I take out a lot of wisdom teeth and a lot of teeth in conjunction with restoring the case or placing implants. In 36 years of practice, since 1981, I have never had a dry socket. I know that sounds ridiculous. I would think the same thing if I was you hearing me say that, but I have never had a dry socket, and I'm going to tell you what I've done to never had a dry socket. It's not that I'm such a great extractor of teeth. It's what I do after the tooth extraction. What if you pack the socket at the time of extraction, creating a matrix so that you don't lose that blood clot. So I mix Vaseline, dry socket paste, and Topex topical anesthetic gel. So I mix equal parts of the dry socket paste and the Topel, and then maybe not quite that much Vaseline as a, as a base, and mix those together. And I keep that in a jar with a lid. Now this is after a wisdom tooth extraction. This is taking the last root out of the extraction site. You can see we've got the socket and the exposed bone. And then I take this Surgisil and I place that in that mixture and really soak it well. And then I place the gauze in the socket with the mixture on it. You can see how I'm plugging it in there. Then I'm suturing it tight with 3-0 gut suture. And normally in these mandibular sites, extraction sites, I'll place two suture. One in the mesial part of the socket and one in the distal part, not all the way to the distal or mesial, but about part way through to suture it up tight. And what that's doing is it's holding the blood clot. So here's another socket after a difficult wisdom tooth extraction. Again, placing the surgery cell with that paste in the socket and just packing it in there, not tight. You know, I'm not trying to completely fill it. I just want it in the socket as a matrix for the blood clot. And then again, suturing it with 3 gut. Now, I just use plain gut for wisdom teeth. Now, when you're suturing, be sure you take a deep bite of tissue, not just a little narrow, thin bite, or the suture will pull through. So here's the same thing, extraction of a wisdom tooth on the other side, placing the surgery cell with that mixture, and then see how I've taken a big bite with my 3 gut suture. And I've sutured it snug, but you see no blanching of the tissue. If it blanches, like I said, the suture has a high probability of pulling through, and this will last, uh, the suture will hold for about three to seven days. I see the patient again in seven days. At that point, there'll be a small opening in the socket where the tissue is opened up just a little bit, but 
seven days is the magic number because it's seven days the connective tissue lining has formed in the socket which insulates the nerve endings in the bone. So the race is to get to seven days and the suture lasts for seven days about and the surgicil resorbs in about seven days or so with the concoction on the surgicil. So when they, the patient comes back in seven days, I give them a scutan syringe, which has a large opening in the end, and I have them rinse the socket after seven days, once a day, before they go to bed at night, with a mixture of about a fourth mouthwash and three-fourths warm water lukewarm water and put it in the syringe and I tell the patient don't squirt it hard in the socket in that there may be just a small opening but just fill the socket up so anything in the socket floats to the surface and use about a half a syringe in each mandibular wisdom tooth socket or if you've extracted another mandibular tooth in that socket and they continue to wrench with the scutan syringe at night before they go to bed until they can't get the tip of the syringe in the opening anymore. So try that technique and put an end to dry sockets. And that's the Dental Minute. Hey you guys, I know you love this episode of the Dental Minute. Have you subscribed yet? If you have not, you need to go on over and press a subscribe right there and get fired up y'all because next week we are talking about bonding a chipped porcelain bridge.